Hi guys! Happy Welcome Tuesday! Back. Welcome back to the best podcast in the world. <laughs> I feel like I feel the giggles a bit. Why? I don't know. You're smiling just... a lot today. Ooh. They just came over. Ooh, brother, ooh. Ooh, brother, ooh. <laughs> smiling. Ooh. Ew. Stop being so nice. Anyway, we're back. We're here. It's another week. By the way, this is episode. 17. Holy shit, we've only got three more to go. I know, can you believe it? But, guys, the fun doesn't stop there. If you are a Patreon, lovely PPP, then we're going to continue the podcast just for you. So head on over there. Absolutely. Um, Yeah, we've decided, haven't we, we're going to continue it once a week while she'll be gone for a little bit of a break because we do need a holiday. But we still will be recording, whether that's in the studio or not. But we'll be doing something on Patreon, and then we'll be we back. We need like a refresh. We need stories for y'all. We need life events in between. And do you know what we say these this right? But we're never short of conversation or chat. No, we're not ever. Actually, it's a strange thing. This life. Isn't I've it? got. I, we, we've been with each other like four days this week, and I've still got a long fucking list to speak to you about today. I know, I'm exhausted. You've had a long week, haven't you? You've been a grafted with old Quinn Management this week. Oh, I'm done in. What really was the moment when I realised that I was too busy was when I was walking up Buchanan Street eating, eating a tuna sandwich from m and in between meetings and I thought, um, I was eating it while I was walking. Mm-hmm. I thought, I don't even have five minutes to sit and eat this today. She's thriving. That's grafting for you right there. It is. I was helping you out with a little bit of in your little shots for content day, me and Rich, hand models. I know. Which is one thing I never thought I would be. <laughs> Who'd have thought? The fills. Hmm? Who'd have thought? Who'd have thought? They're not looking too bad. I think they look quite good. They look quite pretty. They look quite pretty. <laughs> is this a fills? It's just, oh, while we're talking of nails quickly, by the way, a little shout out when I was, sorry, I'm going to have to move my myself from the mic. You're not getting your toes out, are you? Shut up. As if. When did you put them there? Earlier. Product placement. I went in to get my hair done by Mr. Jackie Baxter, whose wedding it was this weekend. We can talk about that in a second. And as I was waiting in the foyer, he, he's now um, based at NAF, which I've never been before. House of NAF. House of NAF. And there was this cuticle oil called Dusk. Guys, I'm not really a cuticle oil girly, but my normal nail lady, Lisa, has like little pens and they're so nice. But anyway, I ran out of that. So I tried this. It is so good. Did I make you try it the other day? Yeah, and it smells amazing. Oh, you know, I'm into my whole masculine smells. Oh, it's beautiful. And it just feels like you've got that nice oil perfume on throughout the day. I don't actually love oil on my hands either. But my cuticles need it. They're dry. Yeah, so are mine. I probably should apply it more often. But highly recommend you get this. It's called, it's the, well, there's a few flavours, but my favourite is the Dusk one. I don't know how much it was, maybe like seven quid, unsure. That's quite good. But recommend. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, spit or swallow for today. If you're watching, you'll be able to see it. It's from Long Short Black. Short Long Black. <laughs> how many times you have to get that right, Zoe? Short Long Black. <clears throat> and um, the South Side. It's up there with one of my favourite bakeries, coffee shops. In Glasgow. Yeah, it's just for like a wee sure. takeaway. Their pan suisse is just phenomenal. I never got that. It's, it's amazing. Layers upon layers of pastry. Damn it, right. Um, and also do really good coffee. Um, also, while we're just talking quickly about the YouTube, we would really, really, really appreciate it. If you are watching this on YouTube, please hit that bell button, that subscribe button, because we're nearly at 1,000 subscribers. Ding! And... So over a thousand of you watch every week so even if you're actually listening to this on spotify or apple Podcasts or wherever and you just fancy just going on youtube and just subscribing and i'm gonna just do it just do it please help us out and see if i can keep being a subscriber from a personal youtube mm-hmm. not that i upload you know what i mean i watch things on and i like to unsubscribe to people who i don't watch anymore because i like all my videos to be watched Oh. You know how I'm like that? Yeah. You're just with stuff like that. And I don't obviously watch all of ours back. 
on YouTube because I've already watched it. So even though it triggers you, even you still though it triggers subscribe. me, I will not unsubscribe to myself. We made Jason and uh, Richard subscribe to it as well. I mean, always unwatched, oh. probably for their own good. That's what I think. Anyway, we have a pistachio and dark chocolate cookie here. Jess tried to try this before we came. It was like no, and it was literally here. I went put that down. She did, and then. I really sadly can't remember what this is called. However, it's like a sponge cake with cream, jam, and it's got something else in it as well. Is it like almond? almond or? Yeah, it's, I'm certain we tried this on season two and it was from, we got the one from Burnfield Bakery in Southside, which is again, beautiful. Right, This okay. looks like the same sort of cake. What is the name of it? Oh, I can't remember, I should have took a picture. Can you mind? Right, let me just break a bit of this cookie off. Mm. <laughs> the cookie's actually green. I wonder if it's got food colour in it or... From the pistachio. That looks so good. I'm going to have to go right in and boot this. I need a sweet treat. Oh, this is so soft and moist. Oh, God. Alan, don't you dare be zooming on that camera right now. <laughs> Holy fuck, Rooney. No way, that is amazing. Take a bit of the cookie and then pass me that back. How the hell do they make that so moist? I, do, I need to know. I don't know how people can even make a cookie. I can't even make a cookie from a packet mix. Yes, you can. Every time I try it fails. I don't understand what I do wrong. Right, cookies, it's really triggering. when they get out of the oven, they look raw. So that's probably where you're going wrong. They will always look raw. You bash it on the side, leave it for like five minutes, and then they harden. That's where you're going wrong. You're correct, because I don't bring them out until they look done. Yeah, no, you fucked it, mate. And then it sat there. And they're rock solid. Dehydrating even more, yeah. You only need to put a cookie in for like eight minutes. And that's coming from someone that is like myself that is not a baker. Zoe, how good is that? That was good. <laughs> <Isn't it? laughs> so good that was like a sigh of happiness um guys zoe shaved off 35 seconds of a 5k Whoa. can we get a whole yeah murray crap hell yeah yep we love it i found it even worse I, yeah can i just say it was just me and zoe on this one oh. uh heather didn't join the fun this week and I'll be honest, we tracked it on my Apple Watch. We actually did park run, didn't we, this time? Mm -hmm. We managed, we were on time. And you stopped a couple of times. I did, like, a, like I broke the run with a wee, like, doom doom couple of fast steps. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I thought to myself, she's not going to do it. Because I said to you, look, even if we just get this done, it's fine. But I said, let's aim for 35 minutes. Let's try and get you 30 when was seconds that? Off. Was that in the last key? Yeah, your your fourth K was was slow, not slow, but you you'd really ramped it back. But then the the, the first K and the fifth K, you were t you were fast. So that's what shaped that's what saved you the time yeah. in the fourth, first and second were faster than the last. Yeah, K, that's why I think I was done in after that. Yeah, so it's telling fast. you to slow down, but you did it and you shaved off your time. And I said to you, even if you don't shave off any seconds. The fact you've done it consecutively for Well, you were saying to me, come on, don't stop or you won't beat your time. And I was like, I couldn't honestly give less of a second. But you know what it was, Zoe? I understand that, right? And I'm not all about to say, like, you need to do it in this time. But when we were 200 metres from the finish and you were walking, it wasn't until that lady behind you said, come on, you've got 200 metres to go, don't stop. And I thought, if you just do this, you actually will beat your time. But if you walk this next 200 metres, you won't. So what would you have preferred? To die on the spot. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> Whatever you say, you're lying. It was honestly so difficult that time. Yeah. It was hot. It, and it was hot again. It was piping hot from the start. I had that wee zip thing off quick on the last time and that's saying something. My back wasn't even tanned. But you said to me yesterday you actually wanted, you were busy, but you wanted to go for a run. Yeah, I planned to go a run yesterday, but I was, excuse me, too busy. Um. So the point is, you're getting there. I can't believe I've... I've done two park runs, I run through the week, and I still don't have skinny legs. We've discussed this. Wrong mindset to have. Right. 
Emmy. Um, so, I was at a wedding at the weekend. Tell us more. It was a party. I wouldn't even say it was a wedding. <laughs> Just a good time. Jack and Abby, your family and friends are wild. Um, but it was iconic. Very good. That's what you want people to say about your wedding, I think. Yeah. It just was a really super relaxed day. Nothing was too over the top. And it was one of those weddings where, in fact, I don't even know why I'm saying one of those weddings because I've never been to a wedding like this. But when the main finished, there was like singing secret waiters. So then the waiters turned into a singer. So then everyone was up dancing. It was ABBA. And then Sounds the, a dream. the dessert never happened. So then the table was getting cleared away and I'm thinking, where's the dessert? And Abby went, this is the bride. Oh, fuck that. We don't need the dessert. So then the tables were cleared. We all went into the other room in the bar. And yeah, I think the desserts came, were sat at the edge, around the edge of the tables at the end of the night. No one touched wanted. them. Just a big party. So much fun. But anyway, I wanted to ask you a couple of things. What are your thoughts on men that wear kilts at weddings? If you married Jason, would you want him to wear a kilt? Yep. Same. I just think it's not often that guys really get an opportunity to do that. Mm. Unless you're up for wearing it at every wedding you go to, which most people wouldn't. Mm -hmm. I also think, especially for guys who do wear suits maybe to work, you should be wearing a kilt. Yeah. Look, you should look different on your wedding day. But I just think for Jason, I don't know. Would you want him to change halfway through the night? No, I would just keep the kilt on, I would think. Would you? Um, and there was bagpipes at the wedding. Yeah, bagpipes I would have that Bagpipes set her down the aisle. Of course, weeping. Wet. For me, it's, you're Scottish, embrace it. But yeah. no one else would do those things, really. Do you know what else he did at the end as well? Which I've never heard before. <sighs> I can't remember what it's called, but they all had a shot. The father of, the, of Jack and Abby had a shot of whiskey. They poured the whiskey into this silver bowl. And then they all took a sip of the silver bowl together at the end of the altar. I have actually... Wait, is this just after the... They've already, they've already got, married at this point, yeah. But just, the, you're still in the kind of aisle bit? Yeah. Yeah, I have actually seen that before, I think. So I don't know why that is. It was a Scottish tradition, they were saying. But I quite mm. like that. Yeah. And then the bagpipes sent her down the aisle. Obviously, I was just a blubbing mess because I just loved them so much. Bagpipes over a song? Yeah. Right, I quite like that. Yeah, I've never... Because the guy was standing outside the... It was at the Bliveswood Hotel. So he was the one that was... Well, you saw him when you dropped me off. He then came down with her. Right, okay. And, oh, just... And then yeah, her like sister... That. Was it her sister or her cousin? Uh, she, when you turn around and you see, obviously, Jack at the end, her sister just face just burst. Oh. She was walk, walking down the aisle absolutely roaring. Was Jack crying? <laughs> no. No. But Abby... They were both nervous. It was so cute. Would you want Richard to cry? No. I know people say, like, if you don't cry, or, like, if he doesn't cry, I'd be disappointed. I just don't know how to No, I think a lot of women that say eye? that they're all... <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> we can't say that. But you know women, when they're walking down the aisle, I am quite an emotional person. Like, I feel quite deeply, so I'm, I'm, I'm roaring at anything mm. when it comes... To... Do you know what it is? I know I say like things about marriage and things. I genuinely love weddings. And you know what it is? I love love. Like I yeah. love people celebrating love. So when I see two people in love or even the whole ceremony, I'm I'm in bits. No, I know. But it's mean. not it doesn't ever mean that I don't want to get married. It's just I don't know. I've got this weird connection with it. So I'm just absolutely crying my eyes out. Love that. It's bagpipes as well though, isn't it? Yeah. But the reason I asked about the kill was because in our group chat, we said this uh, a few months back mm -hmm. and two of our friends were like, absolutely no way, chance in hell. And I thought, what? I would love for it to wear a kilt. But I get it. Pictures and stuff, your man's in a skirt. That's what I was just about to say. Now that I think about it, when I think about the pictures, would I prefer a suit? Yeah, then, you, you would. Know. You would. So I think what I would Definitely. say, if this day ever came, that it would be, you wear a kilt with all your groomsmen, and then when we're partying at night, you put on your black tie, dicky bow. Oh, gorgeous. Because I'd change my dress probably. Same. And also, you jumping about in a kilt is, I don't know about that. Dangerous. No, it's not even that. It's like it's swinging like a skirt. Because then it is a skirt. 
Yeah. And you're wearing no pants. Well, traditionally they don't, do they? Sweaty balls. Yeah. Ew. Ew. Um, um, anyway, what else has been on your plate? Hmm. Physically? Hmm. I went to M&S yesterday and bought low. I did my food shop at M&S. I felt bougie as fuck. Is it even that more expensive these days? I'm going to say no. I mean, yeah, it was. It was over 100 quid and I thought, what the fuck have I just bought? F- yeah, for like how many days worth? I probably didn't strategically plan it well where it was like, this is meals. I just went in and just went wild. Yeah. It was mm-hmm. like supermarket sweep. I was like, oh, new, 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 new. All the new shit. So much good shit. Picnicky stuff. Summer yeah. stuff. Just bets. But yeah, it will last me a while. Um, I'm trying to think. Me and you were together on Saturday. We went to Effie's. That was really good. That was really good. That's what I wanted to talk about that had been on my plate because I really enjoyed that. Yeah, you did, didn't you? And I liked just everything about the experience. <laughs> it's the Turkish restaurant in Uddingston, but there is also one in Merchant City. And it used to be Redstones. Or is it Radstone? No, that's the hotel, unsure. Um, but it was bloody roasting on Saturday, quite unexpectedly. Yeah, it was nice. So um, we walked along there and we sat outside. Yep. Gorgeous view into the blue sky. And we'd spent the day in Linlithgow because Richard was playing rugby, so random. Can you change? But we have done a vlog, so that will be over on Patreon as the monthly special episode um, in the in a matter of days, actually. Yeah, it'll be out before this. Yes. Um. But yeah, we got, what did I get? Chicken sheesh. Yep. Um, which came with rice. We got a salad, which was like feta. Oh, that was good. What was that? Feta, cucumber. Fuck knows, but it was good. They also give you a salad. And the balloon bread with the garlic butter. That was good. Hmm. And it melted all in. And you didn't drink again? No drinking. You not drank at all this weekend? No drinking. Well done. I've not drank since I last spoke to you all. Well done, Zoe. I think that's good. How do you? A week. Um, and then we had dessert as well. Baklava. Baklava. And do we know the name of our thing yet? No, I can't remember. No, I can't, but it was It's Kaya. the baklava pastry that's more Shredded. hairy. It begins with K, I think. Candy mind. Yeah, it was like hay. Yeah. But anyway, that's what was good on my plate in the last week. Mm. I went to Sugo. Did you? With your mother. And oh, sometimes bloody we... hell. She went there her again. I was back at the theatre, unexpectedly, right, before anyone comes for me. My mum's friend did two tickets for the ballet, the ballet, (laughs) Um, and she couldn't make it, so mum asked me if I wanted to go with her, and I thought, why no? Why no? So anyway, I went, first time at the ballet, Mm -hmm. it is ballet, by the way, I know that before anyone fucking comes I know, we can't make jokes, can we? Just a wee joke. (laughs) Um, And it was Edward Scissorhands theme. Which you hadn't seen the film before. I don't think I've seen the film. No. So anyway, I went there and um, the first 10, 15 minutes, I will say, I was a bit thrown off at the fact there was lots of things going on in the stage, but no one was speaking or singing. Mm. Like I felt like, how are they not dying just to be like, oh. Yeah. Like I couldn't quite get my head around that. But then as I got into it and the story started to unravel, I was invested and I enjoyed it. And it's not your typical, like, Swan Lake, where it's yeah. very bally, like, pointures and all that. <laughs> uh-huh. It was just, like, dancey. Right. Quite moving. I was crying at the end. Was she? Yeah. Um, well, it's quite an emotional story, is it not? Yeah. But you can't speak in the film, I'm sure. I don't know. I can't remember. I need it's Johnny wa- Depp. I need to watch it, but it's given Halloween. I feel like I should wait until that time of year. Mm. Anyway... Yeah, so I went to the ballet and I would absolutely go again. Do you know where else I ate? I don't know if I've told you this. So when it was my anniversary on Friday, but we went out in town on Thursday. Yep. I went to, for lunch at... Mamasan. Mamasan. Oh, so did you eat there as well? Yeah. I thought you were just having a drinky poo. So we were at End, and which was like, oh, where should we go and get some lunch? And I was tempted to go back to Maison. <laughs> Not surprised. No. But then as I walked by, I thought, I've never actually been in here. I know there's a... I'm one of those people, right, where something's overly hyped when it o- opens. I'm not asked about going. And when it's been like a year or two past, I thought, I'm never probably ever going to go and eat there. Yeah, you're over it before it's even began. So I walked by and I thought, you know what? I'm going to give this place a shot. 
walked in, it was dead, which I thought, is that a good sign? Is there sure. still scaffolding outside? Yeah, which is a shame for That's them. That's a real shame, I know. There's been scaffolding outside there for years. It's since it opened. That's a shame. I know, because you can't really see in. So anyway, and I, we've eaten there before when it used to be cow, C-A-U. Oh, yeah. And went in and we the service was amazing, should be, we were the only ones in there. The cocktails were great. Um, I had this big green one with like a big bubble and it burst. It was very theatrical. And the guy said to us, order three to four plates. We ordered this chicken satay, the short rib, something short rib, and this sweet, sticky caramel chicken, wow. crispy chicken. Zoe, it was all brilliant. The short rib was that good. Richard ordered another dish. And then we ordered the short rib mamasan, um, masaman, sorry, curry. Lovely. Which was beautiful. So I highly recommend that. I would definitely, definitely be going back. Um, right, so before we move on to our main part of the episode, I wanted just to quickly discuss something that we have spoken about before in an episode, but it brought my memory back because there's been an update with the story and the producers here have never heard this story. So I was at the wedding at the weekend and somebody said to me, oh, what did you do for your 30th? Like surely your 30th must have been ruined with COVID. And I was like, well, actually it wasn't. I... Went to Antigua. Yep. It was on the green list at the time. And my friend, um, Tash, who lives in Leicester, she's Antiguan. And her dad, he knew lots of people on the island. And we managed to get this amazing pent, what would you call it? Like a four-story big villa in Hodges Bay. Um, it was very bougie. It was bougie. If, and you guys, if anyone listens to this has followed me for a long time, you will remember the stories. It was bougie as fuck if you follow me on my personal page, that was. So, Rich then said, oh, tell them about the time where you lost your passport. I was like, oh, yeah, what a great conversation to have at a (laughs) wedding. But I was like, yeah, so basically I was stuck in Antigua and this was the same time I was getting the cat. Do you remember, Erin and Wilson? So my passport got stolen. Bear in mind, there was nobody staying in this Hodges Bay place. It was COVID. Still, there was rules out there. We couldn't leave the... um, resort Mm -hmm. unfortunately my passport was definitely stolen along with my card holder with lots of cash in it i then got ridiculously drunk that night and the next day all the all the team was meant to go to this water park i couldn't go so i stayed in this big huge house on my own i then i'm staying in the best room in the villa of course because it was my 30th so i said i want it all for you i want the top wrap around penthouse panicking trying to find this passport so I think for some reason, maybe I was an organised for once in my life and I put it in the, in the safe. You never know. As I put my hand into the safe, I pull out this extremely heavy, huge diamond encrusted ring, right? And I'm like, holy <laughs> fuck, what is this? It weighed a tonne. So then I put it on my finger like, what the hell? It was hideous. It was the most ugliest thing I've ever seen. Very bling bling. Very bling bling black. It had diamonds all the way around it. And I'm looking at it thinking, what the hell? And I turn it to the side and in encrusted diamonds, it said Flow Rider, <laughs> right? And I'm like, <laughs> Flow Rider? As in the Flow Rider? <laughs> I was just going like, to say the Flow Rider. Apple bottom jeans, <laughs> Flow Rider. So I then put it on my finger and I send it to the group chat because bear in mind they're all out at the villa like I haven't found my passport girls but I found this and it said MBA on the side so my friend's really good friend at the time loved MBA so she sent it to him like look at this ring Jess just found and he was like no 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 no. like you don't understand how rare this is like this is one in a million ring it's been designed for flow rider there's probably like 15 in the world if that um it was awarded at something when it was the MBA championship or something that'll be worth hundreds of thousands of pounds. So I'm thinking, fuck, fuck my passport. I'm going to get in a private jet home. I'm going to sell this rather. In the back of my mind, I actually didn't care. All I wanted to do, I'm such a cat mum, but I wanted to get home to meet my cats. Yeah. And it was just difficult time with COVID. All of the passport offices were shut. There was, at that point, there was seriously no way I was going to get home. So my friend Jess then takes a picture of me on my phone with this ring on my finger. She then tags Flo Rider on Instagram and just like, when you find Flo Rider's ring, he replies like, oh my God. So I've missed a part of the story here. 
Flo Rida was basically staying in the villa the night before I got there with a shanty to celebrate her 40th birthday in yep, Hodges Bay. Right. They hired out the whole of Hodges Bay for a shanty's 40th and he must have left it in the safe. He then replied to Jess's story like, oh my God, please, I need this ring back. So I thought, good karma. I will give this ring back if it's worth hundreds of thousands of pounds and he, I'll explain the situation and he will get me a jet home. <laughs> he will know somebody that will get me a private jet home. So I replied to him like, don't worry, he sent a number. Here's a number to text, my number, he says. And so I text him saying, don't worry, I've handed it into the... Did you do it on WhatsApp? Was it a picture? No, there was no picture and it was on WhatsApp. Right. And we sent the ring back to the guys. Anyway, long story short, did that fucker send a bottle of champagne or even a thank you? No, he didn't. He I did think not. that's absolutely shocking behaviour. Flo Rider didn't even send a bottle of champagne, a thank you text back, even just tickets to one of his shows, nothing. And still to this day, and then the point of this story was, the update is, Flo Rider's just won a lawsuit for an energy drink for eight to two million pounds. And in his speech in the lawsuit where he's winning, he's wearing that ring on his pinky finger. <laughs> I am like... So this is three years later. I'm like, you wouldn't have that on your... If it wasn't for you. You clearly love this ring so much and you've just won £82 million and you didn't even give me tickets to your show. I was a good Samaritan and gave you that ring back. I feel like a million pounds isn't even too much to ask. At this this ring point, was so rare. It's not even like you could go and buy that's it That's what again. I mean. So if you Google basically Flo Rida NBA ring... My face is the first thing that comes up. <laughs> and people message me saying, I'll give you five grand for that ring. Someone in Leicester messaged me saying, I'll give you five grand now. I was like, five grand, mate? Chance are. It's worth 100 grand. <laughs> so if you Google it, there's my big noggin and it's really bad selfie as well. I was so hungover and I was like... Oh. I think that's an iconic story. See, just quickly before we go on to our topic of today, can we just talk about the pressures of packing your shopping away quick enough? At the tell. <laughs> One extreme to the other. <laughs> How the other half live. No, but seriously. Uh, are we talking Aldi here? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, any shop. If you've got more than one bag of shopping, the pressures of that really get to me. But I feel like the pressure is now because we're paying 5p or 10p for a bag. I, my pressure is getting it all in one bag because I'm too embarrassed to buy another bag and admit defeat. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know what you mean. But equally, I'm like, I like to make sure heavy things are at the bottom to obviously not crush anything else. Yeah. So I'm trying to have a bit of a strategy going on with my backpacking. Like cupboard stuff, fridge and stuff. And this person is actually like, ding, 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 ding. Like, they're getting faster and nothing else is changing. Isn't it true, though, that they're getting, the paid, they're getting paid for that? Aren't they getting paid for putting you through quicker? Aldi and Lidl need to have a self-service checkout. They do. Because I'm never going into Aldi for a pint no, of milk. No, my Aldi does. What? The two Aldis near me have self-checkout. Shut up. No, they do. But the other day, I went and I was getting... Where are you? Chopping. Fancy Aldis. Where's that? Near me. Where's I'm not you? telling you for security reasons. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like Palace Grounds one. Yeah. No, it doesn't. It absolutely does now. So there's one up near me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, <clears throat> what was I going to say there? Oh, yeah, the other day I went in and I'd planned out some meals to have. So I was getting quite a lot of things. So I went, I went to the person because it's too much to do on my own. Mm. And she was just batting them through. And I just didn't have a minute to like gather my thoughts or my things. And I just felt that really difficult. It is stressful. I actually now would get a trolley if I've got a pound and I took a pound out and then I lost it. That's a shame, isn't it? I was you need to get one of those things with a key ring. I know, I do. But I actually think now if you can have a trolley, you're better just shoving it all in the trolley and doing your packing at another stage. Yeah. Well, the Audi, the whole point of the long shelf at the back of Audi is to pack your bits. Lidl were the first to do that. Where are they? Yeah. Off the back of that, if you've got 10 million things and I've got a pint of milk, let me go first. I do do that. No good. So do I, but I mean, other people who don't do that are arshals. Yeah, but you shouldn't really be shopping. That's what I meant. I haven't been to an alley where there's a self-checkout before, so that is life-changing. Yeah. Anyway, I had to get that off my chest because the other day I was quite struggles with that. Loves it. 
Bye. Right. Anyway, we're actually here to go back to our very first topic. Because our video is actually going a little bit viral. Out with. Out with. I was wondering what video you were talking about there. Yeah, it's doing really very, very well on TikTok and Instagram. We've got some angry people in the comments, as you do. Can. It is a word. I'm like, yeah, it is a word to you, but it's not a word to me. Yes, it's a word. We get it. But it's not a word to me if I've never, ever heard it. I would never use it. And you wouldn't use it, yeah. yeah. So, anyway. We thought we would go back to chatting about English and Scottish phrases that... Jess has maybe picked up over the last year or two. And we asked you guys of any that you wanted to share with us as well. Mm -hmm. Quite a few we maybe have discussed before, so apologies if we have, but there's newbies here. Yeah. So, shall I, shall I begin? Yeah, I've, you start with your list. Because I've got you've... a really long list here, and I'm guessing some of it will be off that list. God, there's so many replies. That was probably the most replies we've had on a question. Like, yes. We're talking thousands, I think. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, you go first. So... When I first moved up here, the very first thing somebody said to me was, where'd you stay? And that completely threw me off. And it's one of those situations where Scottish people don't understand that that is not... Normal. No, it's not that it's normal. It's not normal to, to an English person. You wouldn't say, where do you stay? It really threw me off. But now that's what I say. If I'm asking someone where they live, I would say, where do you stay? And yeah, we just wouldn't say that. It would be, where do you live? I actually think I say, where do you live? Yeah, you do. Or, my bit. You say that a lot. Do you want to come over at my bit? My bit. Meaning? Or will we go to your bit? <laughs> and does that mean my house or? Yeah. My <laughs> bit. That's weird, isn't it? Yeah. Bit. My bit. Um, and this is very similar to the sense of where I'm from in Leicester. I was brought up in a way where there were certain phrases that were classed as common. So my mum would kick it out of me. If I would say certain things, it wouldn't be allowed. So I'll talk about some slang from Leicester, but there's also slang here that I know you don't say, but there's people that we hang about with that do speak like this. But you're saying common yeah. to us. People maybe would say You would say call it schemey. Yeah, we would say like, yeah, maybe just like rough. Yeah, but then that sounds a bit savage. I wouldn't call someone rough, but I would say, yeah, we would call them common. Yeah, but that is kind of the equivalent of calling yeah. someone a bit like council, a bit rough. Council. <laughs> I would just would never dream of calling someone council. In, that's the, that's the like common's that's just like, like savage. That common is just like the equivalent, though. Really. No, I know, and I know that's why what Glasgow regions call people like schemey council. Yeah. Council. Why do you call it council? That's just the slang way of saying it. It's right. just someone like me who I don't really speak that slang. Okay, so let's let's use Heather for example, because she, she she would say consul. she is someone that I hang about with a lot, who I really struggles to this day to understand. She's from Motherwell, and she will say how no, and that for me throws me off. If <laughs> I, I know. say anything to her, she'll be like how no, meaning why not? Yeah, how no? I don't want to go out tonight. How no? And. I, when she used to start speaking to me, she'll love she'll love this. But I just really struggled to understand her. I don't understand why me and Heather speak so differently, though. Because your mother goes to the theatre. <laughs> <laughs> Although Heather's mum's really nice and, like, proper. Well-spoken, I know. Yeah. It just depends. Oh, I don't know. It does just depend your surroundings and everything, I suppose. Yeah. Another but one, anyway. She says a lot, and you say this, I think... Um, like couldn't and wouldn't would be couldn't he, wouldn't he? Mm, I don't think I'd do that. Would you say couldn't? I couldn't do that. Couldn't. Yeah, you'd go couldn't. Couldn't he? I would be like couldn't. But I don't think I would say couldn't he. No, you wouldn't actually. Couldn't he, wouldn't he? Uh, staying through. Again, staying through my bit. Are you staying through? I would be, I would say, this is what I mean. My brain's so mashed now that I don't even know what I say. I know, but I'm the same because I'm like, do I speak But like staying or not? through in Leicester, I would say. Staying over. Are you coming to, are you coming here? Or are you going there? I wouldn't say staying through. No, I think staying through is like staying over. You would say you're staying through in Edinburgh. For example, and I'll go, um, are you having an overnight in Edinburgh or? 
Right, okay. Yeah, I wouldn't say staying through. <sighs> the wheels in my brain are going at yeah. 100 miles an hour. <laughs> folk. All right. You refer to a lot of people as folk. We don't do that at all. Like there was a lot of folk in there? Yeah. We just say people. <laughs> so boring being boring, English. Boring, I know. <laughs> um, you do this, you do this a lot. Oh, get me a complex in these situations. No, I like it, Zoe. I like it because I say this stuff now. You know that way. <laughs> <laughs> you do that a lot. Yeah. You say something like, um, oh, you know when you just feel good, you know that way. <laughs> It does the job. It does the job. So does out with. It does the job. It's like when you say, I don't really feel that hungover, but I just have that sort of like, I was drinking the night before. You know that, that way? way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, another thing that sort of relates to that is give, giving me the boke or geez, give me, me the boke. Gives me the boke or knocks me, me sick. Knocks me sick is a great one, but I don't think that's just Scottish. I think that is actually quite a Northern thing. Knocks me sick, yeah. And Giving me the boke, I wish I could say it in your accent because it sounds so much better, but that is a phrase that I really f wish was as useful as like out with because I don't know how what I would refer to that now if I'm back home. If someone was giving me the boke. I'd be like, oh, he's giving me the boke. <laughs> but then I would say, oh, he's giving me the ick. But that word is new. I never used to use that. Did Olivia Atwood actually make that a thing? Fuck knows. Probably. But giving me the boke is such an amazing sentence. Exception. Yeah. No, I know it is. And I really wish it was acceptable for me to use that back home. You just need to make but it But I would thing. get absolutely hammered to fuck. Now, this is a good one. I would like to know what everyone in this podcast calls when you are on a bicycle, when you're a kid, and somebody gets on the back or the front. A backy. A backy. You're on the back. Okay, what was if it's on the front? Still a backy. Yeah, probably actually. Fronty. <laughs> so we call it a croggy. Croggy. That's just the that's just the accent, but it's croggy. But what what does that mean? Dunno. What does boak mean? <laughs> Sick. Gag. Does it? Yeah. Croggy is uh, our terminology for a backy. A croggy to me is reminding me of a grog. Like a grogger, like, ugh. Yeah. So I wonder why that is. Or what's a wheelie? Is that not a thing? A wheelie's well? where you're going up on your back wheel. Oh, yeah, that is. Um, and would you say that? Yeah, call it a wheelie, yeah. Right. Another thing that I cannot, 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 cannot get my head around, and I still to this day I'm so confused when you say it. Don't say it. What? But. No. Okay, good, because I've got a complex. No. The, the but is one thing that just fries my brain. You end a sentence with but when the word is though. But it's when you say the back of five. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> the back of five? Like, is it five past five? Is it five to five? Is it half five? I'll be at yours at the back of five. I'm like, I have no idea what time to be ready. The back of five to me is between five and 5.15. The back of five. So like just after? The back of? But that seems the front of, like the beginning of five. The back of five is nearly at the end of, to six. No, no. The back kind of means the end. So why would you say it's at the front? The back of, I know, but it's just, it's more like just after. Mm. I think anyway. It's just one thing that I can't get my head around. So you're saying it's then, if somebody said to me, I'll be at yours at the back of six, it would be, they'll be there between the between six and quarter past. That's what I would take from it. And if I said that, that's what I would mean. I don't actually say that. I'm more of a like, I'll be there, if, I would just put 5.15. Yeah. Or or I would say five-ish. Yeah. Which kind of covers from like 10 to five to maybe quarter past five. Okay. That's five-ish to me. Okay. Um. But that's, you know, another thing like that that's quite annoying when people don't know when to say this weekend and next weekend. Yeah. So like ne when's next Saturday to you? Um, so what day are we on now? Tuesday. So not this Saturday next. Yeah, same. 
Whereas some people mean like the next Saturday as in like... Coming up. The next Saturday in life, which is Saturday coming. But that's mm. wrong. No, that is wrong, opinion. yeah. That's this Saturday. Yeah, correct. You've got this Saturday and, and next, next Saturday. Saturday. Okay, thank you. And you've got the one after. <laughs> Then you've got three weeks from now. <laughs> Something that you guys make as well that I, you'd probably be shocked that no one else really has, is an egg in a cup. What? What, a boiled egg in a wee holder? No, that's a boiled egg. But you know, you call it an egg in a cup. But that's what it is. It's not. It's like a mashed up egg with butter in a cup. All oh, right, once you mash it up and all yeah. that, interesting. You call it, I think you call it an egg in a cup. Yeah, I think we do, but actually what I would take from that is a boiled egg and a wee hold that you would dip the soldiers in there, but I'm egg and soldiers, I think yeah. I'm wrong then. Yeah. Um, I forget that's an option. That's quite good on toast, mm. actually. Never had it before. You Rich could do that, a lot but avocado, kid. you could Ooh. make that quite nice. Fancy. Not scheming I, no more. <laughs> I'm not scheming. <laughs> Never have I ever could, been. You, are you Kunzel? No. Nope. What are you? Posh. Theatre. Just the theatre, <laughs> just the theatre, kid. Um, you said something yesterday, and I like it. You say um, when someone is being wide, wide, a wide. Oh, what does that mean? Like, like getting brave. Yeah, like not nasty, just like a bit cheeky, like a bit twisted. Yeah, like kind of overstepping the mark a wee yeah. bit. Yeah. What are you get if wide someone's for? like winding you up, you'd maybe say, "Oh, stop being wide." Okay. I feel like that's dying, actually. I've not heard that in a while. Let's bring it I, back. I did say it yesterday, yeah, I think. Yeah, let's bring it back. Right. Um, Why do? <laughs> you don't use this either, but uh, Richard's family do. Uh, Adini Ken says it a lot, an awful lot. And that's I don't know. Don't know. <laughs> I feel like he just drops it in random bits no, that, of sentence. that does mean I don't know. Adini Ken. Adini Ken. Yeah, that is that. Um, Rocket. I've heard you right, say well, that this, before. This is where English and Scottish extremely differ because it's rocket, not something that English people use as a compliment. No, you, that's um, weapon. But, right, weapon okay, and yeah. a rocket. Would... Weapon and a rocket, you would you would say as in like they that's are... Fit. Fit, attractive, But whatever. that would probably be more about a man, a man, Saying it a about southern a... man cockney geezer talking about a woman yeah we don't really use that in leicester where i'm from but yeah if if i, I if some, i heard a guy saying that i would think he was referring to someone being really fit like a weapon is like top of the top dog like worldy woman no a weapon and a rocket here is like an absolute like embarrassment like an absolute gimp i don't, I don't not even like just Spice a weapon, boy. <laughs> like a pain in the arse, like annoying, embarrassing, like making an arse himself, like just... Okay. I don't know how else to describe it, it's hard. That's all I can really say. A weapon. Love it. He's a weapon. I He's know we can't really say this word, but the C-U-N-T, I feel like it is... We use it in a positive way. Yeah. Like if someone's a good... <laughs> we can beat this out, but if someone's a good... <laughs> like, it's a, a really endearing phrase to say. But for us, because I think, and I feel like Londoners as well, when they say, they would say can't, and it sounds a lot more softer. But where I'm from, I've got such a, it's just aggressive. And I don't mm. think there's any way you could say it quite endearing. But does that not, if you look that up in the dictionary, does that not actually mean vagina? It does, yeah, in a really awful way. So it's actually a really disgusting word to use, so we should never use it. But yeah. Mm. Um, next is... I like this as well, and I said we. I accidentally used this the other day to my cat. <laughs> winching, winching, snogging. Are we winch at the weekend? Well, we would say snog. We would say snog as well, though. Would you? Snog's a bit more like ooh. Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> Winching's more like oh, we hot kissed in the club. Okay, Wayne's love that. You turned the Wayne's against <laughs> us. <laughs> my friend just came up the other day and. I think it might have been Heather Shock was talking something gibberish and then she said Wayne's and my friend looked like, what did you just say? And I was like, that means kids. The kids. The Wayne's. The Wayne's. Um, shite bag if you didn't. We would say pussy all if you don't. Pussy all? P pussy all. P 
Pussy hole. Pussy hole. Yeah. <laughs> Which is awful as well, I know, but as a kid, we'd be like, pussy hole if you don't. There's nothing better than when someone won't do something and you say, you're shite bag then. <laughs> There's just nothing better. There's no worse insult. Shite bag. <laughs> um, now, this is what always gets everyone riled up. What do you call a dressing gown? I call it a dressing gown. What would you call it, Marie? Dressing gown. Now, Rich calls it a goonie. Right, I have heard that before. And weirdos call it a house coat. That has to stop. I'm sorry. I think that's so bizarre. Do you? As a Scottish person, you would never say yeah, house I'm a, coat. Yeah, I'm dressing gown. I think it's weird when people say house coat. House coat. I know that it's a thing, but I think it's sh- strange. Is that schemey? I don't know, actually. No, I think that's just there's two options. What one do you what one do you say? What one were you taught to say? Yeah. I don't know if that's a difference in class and finance. <laughs> Did you see someone actually messaged us? Was it on Patreon or Instagram? And you know how we were talking about the skitters? Yep. And then they said that their mum calls someone at work skitter lips because they chat so much shit. <laughs> <laughs> I like oh, that. That was brilliant. Skitter lips. Um, now, Zoe, would you say, if I said the word mithering to you, what would you? What would that mean? What? Mithering. Don't even know what that is. What? But that could just be me being thick. No, it's not you being thick. I've heard this is a Leicester phrase or where I'm, where maybe like English. But I, do you know what that is, Murray? Nope, never heard of it. Wow. So, I, I would, how do you even spell that? I would that? say something like, stop mithering me. Like annoying? Stop bothering me. Yeah. Never and I thought that was like a proper word, but no. it's obviously not. Um, another one that I think is just where I'm from is, how would you say if you were brushing your hair and there was knots in it, what would you call that? Tuggy. Tuggy. <laughs> I would say all my hair so tuggy. What? Well, mine's worse. We would say cotty. Yeah. I've got cots in my hair. No, I don't like that. Tangles, tangles, tangles yeah. Of tangle teasers. Yeah, yeah I'd maybe say like, oh, that's different. I feel like if I was like taking a, a bobble out and wet here, I'd be like, oh, it's all tangled. Yeah. And if I was brushing it, I'd be like, it's so tuggy. I love it so much. But how do you say, I would say, can you put a pleat in my hair? Plat. And another thing you call, what are those things you call? Kirby's. Kirby's. <laughs> it's a grip to Kirby, me. No, it's a Kirby grip. A Kirby grip. The and full what word. do you call a hair bubble? A bobble. A bobble, not a hair tie. No, and not a hair band. A hair band goes around your hair. Yeah. But then people call that a headband. Yeah, I'd call that a headband. A hair band, I would call the one, that the fabric one. No, a hairband, I would call the plastic one that goes behind your ears and you push it back yeah. and it's got the wee spiky bits A headband. In it. That'd be a hairband for me. Oh. A headband would be like the ones that we wear to be cool. Yeah. Interesting. What about get it up you? Love it. Get it up you. <laughs> get it fucking up you. Or get it round you. What's that mean? Just same like, thing. Fuck off. What happens if I was stood here, right, and I just got your trousers and yanked them down? What's that called? Skanked skanked I call it skanked as well that's so weird you'd say that because there's definitely other words for that so there's a few someone messaged us saying this skegged yeah breaked no kegged and scanted what would you call it scant scant what about um, the phrase he doesn't know if he needs a shite or a haircut like he doesn't know his head from his arse yeah but I've never heard that before that's what would you call a condom? A Johnny. So we'd call it a dubber. Dub. Why? <laughs> Don't know. When I was younger, it was like, has he got a dubber? But again, I wouldn't say Johnny. I would just say condom. <laughs> of course you would. What do you call, um, so a little tiny alleyway? I would just say a street. No, like a little one where you walk down. Path? No. Like it's in between houses and it's like... Close? No. Weird. We'd call it a jitty. Or some people call it an entry or an alleyway. I would just say an alleyway, I think. Interesting. Is there yeah. something that you think we call it? 
No, never heard it. But I would say the jitty. I mean, a close is more what our flat has. Like once you're in the close, and the and the the first door, that's a close. Kind of like a hallway, but obviously it's not a hallway because it's different flats. Oh, you'd call an inside thing a close. I would, yeah. Really? So a close to me is like a is a road where um it you can't get out of it until you turn back. There's no other way through the close. I used to live on a road called Bracken Close. What, a dead end? Yeah, sorry, yeah, dead end. Cul-de-sac. Cul-de-sac. Right, yeah. Okay, okay. Oh, Never heard of that. Vernal's a wee alleyway. Never heard of that. <laughs> what about this? I'll wait and take your heed for a shite. I'll wait and, yeah, like, go on and sort your head out. Yeah, I've, I've never really used that, like it. What do you call a plastic... A plastic band... A plastic band. Mm. We call it a laggy band. No, I think it's just plastic band. But this is more Leicester stuff now, I'm saying. Well, what's the... Are you talking about, like, the brown ones you buy? Yeah. No, I don't know. I think it's just a plastic band. Laggy band. Um, what if I was to say there's a chap at the door? What would that mean to Jess? Well, I know that's Scottish, but yeah, I would never have heard that before I moved here. You knock at the door. So you would say knock? Go knock the door, yeah. Because chap down south means man. A man, yeah, so a bloke. chap at the door would mean there's a man at the door. <laughs> God, it's so close yet so far, these places. Do you know what else I love about English people as well? And um, you've picked this up because Molly's psychic, but we always shorten words and make you it do. just daft, like say no's. There's a big thing going around on TikTok about the general election being the Jenny Leck. <laughs> <laughs> Cost of living crisis is the uh, cause he lives. <laughs> I call an off license the offy. Like weird shit like that. I think we do that as well, but just with different things. Yeah. But I can't really think what right now. But I do quite like that. We've spoke lots about this is this is again if you're quite like common <laughs> from Leicester, but you would say, um, Oh, he's got a cob on. Meaning, oh, he's got the ump. Did you say that? No, wouldn't say anything. The arse? Um, I would just believe he's in a mood. In a mood? Yeah, I wouldn't say that. And what do you call a swimming costume? Bathing suit? I call it a swimming costume, but people call it a cosy. Yeah, we'd call it a cosy or a coggy. Why? What's with the cog? I feel like you've said coggy for about 10 things. Croggy, coggy. <laughs> Yeah, everything for me merges into one. Yeah. Yeah, what's that one you just said? Do you want out? Yeah, like, that's just a noise. But what you're actually saying is... Do, do you, you want, want anything? anything? I say that a lot still. Go and shop, John out. The problem is when you add the shop bit at the start because it's just one noise. It's like, go and shop, on it. And it's like, pardon? <laughs> and I would say things like, go in bed. I'm going bed. Yeah, the two doesn't, doesn't ever, exist. You don't know the word two. But none of us do. Like, we're all the same. Anyone listen to this that's Leicester, we are all the same. Like, we just are lazy. It's weird. Um, And more ways than one. Do you wanna? Do you wanna as well? Do you you wanna? Do you wanna? Do you want to? We would say, do you want to? Do you want to? Do you want want to do that? Do you know what um, Jason says, which I couldn't, it took me a while getting bored with this. Mm hmm. The back door being the back garden. What? So like, do you want to sit out the back door at such a nice day? I'm like, no, the door's the door. <laughs> the door is the physical door that opens and shuts. But I would say, do you want to sit out the back? I would say out the back. Yeah. You don't even need to say garden, out the back's fine. Yeah. But like, the back door to him and his family and pa- his pals and stuff is the garden. What? But he's from near you. I know, but the speech is different. It is different. He says car for car. He does. And I'm like, the what, sorry? He's really, really Glaswegian. Yeah, he is. I don't even know if it's Glaswegian. I think he does just have that sort of like slang about him. Yeah. I just don't really. And it's weird because my dad and his side definitely do speak quite slang. 
Yeah. But I think my mum's just kind of always corrected me. And we're not posh at all. Like, people obviously, like, Jason will be like, you just think you're posh. I'm like, it's not. She just has made me speak right. Properly. I don't speak properly. Properly. Yes, yeah, um, I speak properly. <laughs> but what I hate is when people say, f- instead of, f- and you do it, but I think it's an English thing. Yeah. So I try and not pick you up on it. Thick. If- I would say, like, thick, rather than thick. Yeah, but that is thick. Yeah. But I know English people, it's kind of part of the way you're from sometimes yeah. down there. But if people up here do it, I think that I'm like, you're uneducated. <laughs> like, see when people have a business and they chat to the camera and stuff and they do that, I'm like, you've, I'm unsold. Yeah. Like, you would put me off using you and your business because you don't know how to speak. You're giving snob. That's what you're giving. No, but that is annoying. Like, I'm thinking about. Yeah, that is bad, that's actually. Wrong. Thinking. That's I wouldn't so say that. Wrong. I don't go thinking. I do not, Zoe. I think sometimes when you're on a roll, you do. Yeah, I think, yeah, maybe. I think, I think, I wouldn't say thinking. No, but I think it's more the whole, the whole word's different for you, obviously, from your accent. Yeah. So some, like, like Cockney all do that. Yeah, they do. It's part of it. It's, that's part of, it's, you've learned that way, but if you, you should speak how you write. Yeah. And that thinking triggers me mm-hmm. as soon as someone on a video or something or in my presence says that I'm like oh <laughs> you're thick thoughts <laughs> what's, what's your, your thoughts imagine I said to you what's your thoughts that's so wrong I think I actually do that you what's do? your thoughts <laughs> and another one with that is three three one two three four one two three grow up I'd also say um if we were going out, I'd go younger. Younger. You're like younger rather than you hungry. Are you hungry? Younger. Younger, love. Younger, me duck. Um, what, what, what was that last bit there? Me duck. That's what my grandma would call me. What's, is it just you that calls your mum goose or is that a thing? No, I just call my mum goose. But some, goose. someone else in your group or something referred to their mum or someone is goose and I thought, is that a thing down there? Nah, no. Mother goose. Mother hen. Yeah, I mean, makes sense. What's the other thing? I went to um, Croatia to this festival and I met this guy there that was from Aberdeen. And everything he, just... everything he said here was like everything at the end of each sentence here. Here, <laughs> here, here. And I, to the point where I thought, is this banter? <laughs> is he weighing me up? Because, no, that's just what happens up there. Here. A lot of things happen up there. I don't drink here. Eh? I'm from, the, from Aberdeen here. Eh? And it means like, fit Ken like is how are you, I'm sure. What? But obviously they say it fast. It's like fit Ken like. And it's how are you? And you're like, fit Ken like? Why? Eh. <laughs> eh, 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 it's just a completely different word. I mean, lovely, lovely guy, mind you. But at the end of it, I thought, I thought, I thought, couldn't get on board with it. No. Anyway. I think that's us. But you all continue to amaze me every single day. I think the conclusion of that conversation is that we've got the better banter and that's just a given. For sure. I'm not even going to disagree. I think your banter is definitely better, but when you do get a bunch of Leicester people together, it's so funny. Like, we change the... We say, see that put cackle on. But that is just us joking. But we will talk like we're from, like, Coronation Street. Pop kick yeah, on. when we're around like <laughs> you, Holly and Kane all at once, it gets a bit. <laughs> but that for me is my favourite. Because you all start shouting Babby and all that and it's too much. <laughs> you like Babby? <laughs> I love the Leicester twang. Like there's nothing about it more that makes me smile so much. I love it. But it is the same as you. Like if you wanted to take the piss and act a bit rough, you would purposely talk more slang. Yeah, like, there's times when I catch myself speaking more slang. You do when you're around Jason. Big time. The whole accent changes. Ooh, that's minging. Yeah, you do. When you're on the phone to him, I'm like, who is this person? Eh, I hate that. <laughs> you won't notice you do it, though. No, I do actually notice I do it. I think it's because if he said something to me like, no, I can't do that, can you do this? I'd be like, no, I can't do it. Yeah, and you don't speak like that. No, I don't really. It, it does depend too, but I don't like noticing other people change their accent. Yeah. I find that quite triggering, so I need to stop that. 
we spoke about it before, but like the Glasgow Uni accent. I'm still unsure what that is, but that seems to get rinsed all the time online. I've ins- you've instantly lost me when you start speaking like that. But what is it? Because it's a fake accent. But what is it? It's Speak just like it then. Like... <laughs> I can't even. You can. All you need to do is put one. One foot could be in the West End, one foot could be out it, and you'll hear it instantly. Just speak like it then. I can't, because I can't think right now. <laughs> Say I can't think right now. I can't, can't. I can't think right now. Stop! I go to I Glasgow know, Uni. I know exactly what you mean. Do I go to Naked Suit for lunch? <laughs> the upward inflection. <laughs> it's going to be marvellous. <laughs> It's just, there's just this like annoying twang at the end twang. of each word. I think that's it. That might have been wrong, but everyone who's listening and has experienced it or has put the accent on will know exactly what we're talking about. So you fuckers, you better stop it. Well, thanks for that, guys. We hope you enjoyed those English, Scottish phrases. I'm sure there's going to be many more weird and wonderful things as time goes on. I know. But before we go, I'm going to pass over to Zoe. We've got exciting news. Big news huge anyway we touched on it last week and we've got an event coming Woo! where you can join us and pester us kisses and kisses oh zoe so much yay <laughs> anyway we are doing an event a food festival shall we call it a mini food festival a mini food festival with dot guard social yay how fun because they both love that place anyway love 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 and think it's perfect for you little piggies so especially perfect for the summer as well i hope it's sunny and the shutters shut are up, up mm-hmm. and it's just like sunny day vibes anyway it's the 21st of july sunday, sunday and it's two sittings there's 12 until half two yep half two until five so you can choose which one suits you best yep we will be there for both of them in the same energy, the same mood whoop, whoop, whoop. for the both. And Unless Jess gets pissed for the second one. Excuse me, speak for yourself, honey. I don't drink anymore. You will be drinking at that. No, I won't be. Why? Because I don't drink anymore. Shut up. You said you were drinking until your holiday and that will have been and gone. Just. Anyway, so we are going to be there. It's going to be super fun. We want to actively encourage you to bring your other halves with you as well. We don't want this to just be always full for the girls. of girlies. Um, I mean, your other half might be a girly. You never know. But bring just we want to it to just be more of like a nice social sociable day thing. Mm-hmm. Um, a nice Sunday activity. Yeah, and I mean, you are more than welcome to go and get absolutely off your nut if you really fucking want to. I'm sure there'll be many people doing that. Which I might join you on that one. But we want it to be more of a summer day vibes. Yeah. Sunday, really good food, really good chat, nice music. We can all mingle. Um, great venue. So yeah, let's just have it. And maybe a few surprises from us. Yeah. Just maybe. Yeah. Just want it to be more of like a little social get together as opposed to a big, huge party party. Tickets will be on sale this Friday from 12 unless... Unless. You're a PPP and you're on Patreon. You will get access at 9am. So you, you've got three hours to secure three your tickets. tickets. And there isn't many at all. I think in total across the two sittings, 500? Yep. So 250 each sitting. Um, and yeah, there's thousands of you guys. So bear that in mind. <laughs> Be quick. Don't mess around. <laughs> And it's really nice value for money as well. Yeah, tickets will be £20 and that's your entry and a drink. Yeah. And then we're going to have some fun wee foodie bits at each of the vendors. And we will design a dish with each of the vendor and then there'll be like a special price as well. Be a really nice day out. Yeah, we hope to and see you And you can there. also bring your dogs. Or cats. Just um, if anyone has, let me know so I can take some pirating before you arrive or else I'll actually collapse. <laughs> But that's fine. It's part of the fun. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh. Okay. Well, thanks for tuning in to another week of A Lot on Your Plate. And we hope to see you on Friday. If not, see you next Tuesday. Bye. Bye.